back about 12 years ago, I had a betta fish. Anybody know what a betta fish is, Siamese fighting fish? It was a blue male, beautiful fish, kept in a fish bowl. And I guess they're really hardy. You know, you don't have to clean their bowl out. They, they're used to living in mud puddles in wherever. Uh, anyway, uh, if you put two, two males in, they fight. So what I did is I took a mirror and I put it up against the fish bowl. So you can imagine what that betta fish saw when he saw another bait in the bowl. Right into the side of the bowl. That was fun for me. <laughs> Did I tell you I was like 40 some years old at that time? <laughs> anyway, he didn't like what he saw in the mirror. Uh, he didn't like it at all. And I can relate to that. I look in the mirror and sometimes I don't like what I see in the mirror. You know, I, but it's so important for us to have that mirror in our lives. Otherwise, we get a little self-righteous. You know, who am I? I get arrogant. Well, not necessarily, but we get arrogant, self-righteous, uh, can do no wrong. We don't know how we affect people or people's perceptions of us. Sometimes it's very difficult to have someone who's a truth teller. Nathan was a prophet. And back in the day, they had prophets. They had what's called outside prophets. Those are kind of standing outside the the walls of the city, uh, like Jeremiah. And this is what's going on wrong, <laughs> Ezekiel. You know, this is what's going on. You change your ways, and nobody wanted to hear it. But they were out there, outside the wall. Nathan was an inner prophet, inside prophet. And he was the right hand of, of the king, who happened to be David at the time. And, and kings had prophets. And, and sometimes they weren't very ethical. They'd tell the king what the king wanted to hear. Say, this is the word of the God, this is the word of God, you know, a.k.a. your word. But Nathan was sent by God to say some pretty damaging things to David. Um, I find it interesting that David took it. You know, being the ruler of, of these two combined nations, that he was able to say, you know, ooh, I hear you. More importantly, I hear what God is saying through you. And David had every right to be arrogant because he was God's beloved. He was chosen by God, anointed by, by God to be the king. David had every right to be arrogant and to not listen to anybody but himself. But David, being that person of God, flawed as he was, listened. And when Nathan put the mirror up to his face, you know, he saw the flaws. It was easy for David to, to point out the flaws in other people. That, that ruler should be put to death for doing that to that poor man. But yet, oops, eat my words. Because we can't stand it sometimes. And even as a, as a country, as, mu as many good things as we do as a country, there are things that, that we don't do or, that are so, aren't so good, but... When somebody says something against the country, they're unpatriotic. How can you say that? Well, we all have a voice. We all have the, the ability to be a, a, a mirror to whatever's going on in, this, in our lives, in the lives of the government or the lives of, of people we know, sometimes to be that truth teller. If we don't like war, we speak out against war. And then some may say we're unpatriotic. Or, you know, even my Vikings... They're, they're number one in one thing, in one thing only, I, I found out. It was, uh, was it uh, uh, criminal activity? Something like that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. They you can't win a Super Bowl, but hey, yeah, we're, we're good at that. At one point when I was in college, they were known as the Hazelden Vikings. Hazelden is a drug rehab in Minnesota, and many of the Vikings were in rehab, so they called them the Hazelden Vikings, the Minnesota Vikings. But even Adrian Peterson, you know, is a star as he is, you know, he's not a perfect person. He's flawed, too. And, and when he's put up against it, the mirror is up there. And I congratulate the, 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 the club for, for not letting him play, even though it was damaging to the Vikings because almost in some cases he is the Vikings. So without Adrian Peterson, it's tough to win any games, even 10 to 42 Against somebody else, I don't know. Is there a Bears game going on today, too? I saw Illinois plates going up north. But it's always the, this, the fact of being held accountable. You know, and, 
And God provides a way for us to be held accountable. He provides a way for, for his servants throughout Scripture to be held accountable. Uh, and my question, too, is, is why didn't God intercede before all this happened? Why didn't God tell Nathan, you know what, David's about ready to screw up. You better stop him in his tracks now before he sends poor Uriah to the front. Before anything happens with you and Bathsheba, why don't you stop it now? But and then I think, well, God gave us freedom to think, to make choices and to grow as people. And sometimes that growth means we screw up. I should be really grown by now. <laughs> you know, and I think, why was God silent in that case? Why, why wasn't, you know, Nathan more of a figurehead then? Well, we all ask ourselves that question. We all ask ourselves the question, well, who held, holds me accountable for what I do? As a pastor, you all hold me accountable. There's not one person that holds me. You all hold me accountable. And as a pastor, we work as a team that I, I try to help hold other people accountable too. And as Christian people, we hold each other accountable for things. We try to stop it in the tracks before anything happens. But sometimes things do happen. We make poor choices. And sometimes in order for us to realize it, the truth tellers come out. If they're good friends, if they're good servants of God, they will tell the truth and be kind and considerate in doing that. Who or what is your mirror? Consider that. Consider how God works through people. Maybe behind the scenes. You know, in college I took a class it was called Christian Humanism. And, and, huh? How does that work? Christian humanism, aren't they two different things? And yet the professor made him, combined them in certain ways that made it sound okay. We studied the wisdom literature of the Bible, a lot of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and some others. And one student made the observation, said, well, why is there wisdom literature? And her response was, maybe that's in response to the silence of God that we seem to have. This wisdom literature, maybe that's God working behind the scene. Maybe not so forthright and outgoing, but maybe through that. Maybe that's our mirrors that, that Nathan, and God working through Nathan, God working through the, the Vikings ball club to, to hold people accountable or the church to hold each other accountable. God works through that too. You know, and, and Nathan doesn't make this charge lightly. God sent him, as God sends us to, to make sure that we're all kind of holding the faith and holding together and holding our humanity in, in check too. It doesn't mean at all that there's no place for, for judging what is right and wrong. I, I know that saying, well, uh, don't judge others. Well, that's true, but unless they're abusing somebody else, yeah, or somebody else is getting uh, uh, trod upon somehow, then, yeah, you've got to make a judgment and, and intercede somehow. Hold that person, that country, that club, whomever, accountable to what they are doing. Because we know that we make mistakes, and we need advice. And we need to let our guard down enough so that we can seek advice when we need it, and sometimes when we don't need it. And to be able to be vulnerable enough to accept it when sometimes we don't ask for it and it comes our way. That's the freedom we have. And that's the freedom God gives us. Not forcing us to love God, but it's sweeter when we love God without being coerced into it. When we love Jesus without being made to love Jesus. Our kids, our family, our friends, whomever. It's much sweeter when it comes from their own hearts rather than being made to love. God allows a lot of behaviors. God, hopefully, well, in the case of this and other parts of Scripture, makes concessions to make sure that we try not to make those again. And if we do, there is mercy, there is forgiveness on David's part Psalm 51 that we read together is David's response to this Nathan accusation. Please, please forgive me. Dine on ashes and starve until the son, his son, slowly dies. The son that Bathsheba had given him through this, whatever it was. 
David is contrite in his heart, truly seeking forgiveness. How many of us would do that? Truly. God gives us a way. And God is acting through this, this whole story. God is not one of wrath and, and, and judgment in this case, but one of keeping David accountable, giving David mercy and forgiveness where needed. Because that's what God does for God's children. And we know that God has a lot of children. And we are God's children. God is not silent. But God speaks loudly, oftentimes through the voices of others, sometimes the voice within ourselves. But God is, is active, and God is not silent. Amen.